What do you make of what you saw tonight? Just a great performance. I mean, when you look at the Cleveland Cavaliers, they're essentially a lottery team without LeBron James. And <laughs> to see what he did tonight, 35-15-9, and nine, yes, it was great to see Jeff Green step up and give a contribution with his 19 points off the bench. Tristan Thompson uh, nearly had a double-double. The, the combination of the two definitely elevated their level of play defensively, which is why Boston um, had such trouble offensively. And it did not help that Terry Rozier pulled the John Starks and basically went 0 for 10 <laughs> from three points. Point range. Uh, you know, remember John Stocks and I love John Stocks, but 1995, we remember what happened in that NBA Finals against Houston uh, when he when he shot two for 18 and one for 11 from three point range. We remember that. This was symptomatic of that, but in the end, it comes down to LeBron James. And you know, you look at him and you see the load that he's carrying. You see both teams bricklaying uh, for the first half, shooting just 6 of 36 from three-point range, wondering who can make a shot and when and what have you. It's a game seven. It's on the road. A rookie in Jason Tatum is showing you that, you know, just sensational play is in his future. And yet somehow, some way, no matter what the obstacles were, LeBron James found a way to step up and handle his business. You just can't say enough about the kid right now, the man right now. That's why he's the greatest player in the game today. Uh, there's no question about it. The greatest player of this generation, I don't think it could be denied. Mm, well said. I want to get your opinion on this because Van Gundy mentioned this toward the end of the game and Jackson seemed to concur with it, that just getting to this stage mm. is the greatest accomplishment of LeBron's career. We should mention, of course, LeBron has won the NBA title numerous times and, of course, with the Cavs in 2016. Do you concur with that statement? I do. Uh, you know, you can make an argument that the first go round when he got uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers, that Rat Pack bunch to the finals against the San Antonio Spurs. Remember, they had to go through the Pistons uh, and a couple of other teams in the Eastern Conference before getting to that finals. Um, and back then with the rules, uh, not, not what they are today, the game being considerably softer today than it was even back then, the road to prosperity was perceived as being a bit tougher. In this particular instance, it's right up there, though, uh, but not, but mainly because of what you saw from the other Cavs. Uh, J.R. Smith had 12 points tonight. All eight of his shots were three-point attempts. He hit three of them. Uh, we see Jeff Green, and we see uh, uh, Tristan Thompson, but these are individuals that struggled miserably on the offensive side of the ball periodically, not just during the regular season, but during these playoffs. Kyle Korver has been a model of consistency to some degree in terms of his perimeter shooting ability, but we saw inconsistency as it pertained to the time that he was receiving on the floor because of matchup issues and what have you. And, and that just brings you to Coach Ty Lu. I think, Jeff, the, the most uh, adroit point that uh, – uh, the most – salient point that Jeff Van Gundy brought out was the fact that Ty Lue doesn't get enough credit. This is a man that has been maligned as head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers. He had to depart uh, midway through the season due to health issues and what have you. People were speculating as to whether or not he would be back next year. They're still speculating uh, uh, about that right now. And yet somehow, some way, since he has been the coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers, no matter what moves have been made, no matter what adversity has struck, it has not mattered. He has gotten the team to the finals each and every single year, and they've captured an NBA championship. And as great as LeBron is, and we know he is great, he's the greatest in the world today, you got to have some kind of coaching, some kind of leadership. Um, and Ty Lue clearly is providing that to some degree because there's no way on earth they'd be able to get to this point continuously if that were not the case. So we've got to give credit where credit is due in that regard as well. No question about it. One other thing that Ty Lue adroitly mentioned and was able to wade through with the help of LeBron is that they said during the second half of this game, just reminding people that this was a team that was essentially flipped on its head in February at the trade deadline, had to almost start over to get here. What do you make of the fact that how far they've been able to come and how fast they've been able to do it, considering it was a roster overhaul? Well, let's, let's be real. I mean, you're talking to me, and I'm going to be as real as I possibly can be. Some luck was involved. You're going against a bunch of young puppies in the Indiana Pacers with Victor Oladipo as their star, and it's the first time he was a number one option. We, anytime we see the Toronto Raptors and LeBron James on the court at the same time in the postseason, it's like Fright Night or Friday the 13th for them. They're absolutely petrified of going against LeBron, and they always show it. And then you have a Boston Celtics team that did not have Kyrie Irving. Now, when I look at the Boston Celtics devoid of Kyrie Irving, I say, you know what? It's lucky that you didn't have Kyrie Irving out there uh, because it was very lucky for the Cleveland Cavaliers. But then LeBron gives you the impression that somehow, some way, he would find a way. 
on one hand, you want to give him all the credit in the world for enduring the level uh, of adversity that he had to endure and overcoming it. In the same breath, you have to give him uh, some culpability for the adversity that ultimately struck them uh, because if a better relationship with Kyrie Irving had been cultivated, Kyrie Irving would have stayed in Cleveland mm. in all likelihood if Dan Gilbert wasn't foolish enough to trade him, and then you would not have had to work this hard to get back to the finals. It would have been considerably easier. So, again, we have to take all of those things into consideration, but in the end, please don't interpret it as me taking any credit away from LeBron James. He is the greatest in the world today. And tonight was just the latest night that he validated his claim as the greatest player in the world and the greatest player of this generation. I say this generation because obviously I think MJ is from a previous generation.